This video is going to be about C2200 or C2200. That is gonna be the code that you will see. It applies to a lot of the Chrysler vehicles, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Ram. But in this case, we're gonna be working on this Ram 1500. So these things seem to be going bad in a lot. And what it is, C2200 is actually an internal failure on your ABS module. So I've tried reseating the plug, tried resetting it, tried reinitializing the ABS module. None of that stuff to work. Let me show you guys the lights inside. All right, so this is what code C2200 or C2200 will look like. You'll notice all of your lights are on. You're gonna have your ABS light, your traction light, your parking brake light. All those are gonna be illuminated. And also, if you are able to go into the messages for the vehicle, you're gonna see service trailer brake system, service electronic braking system, service anti-lock brake system. All those are gonna be on. So don't take this one lightly, you guys. I have had to drive the vehicle around just because it's my daily commuter, but I've been driving around for the last couple weeks while the part came in. So I wouldn't take this one too lightly because I noticed that this truck nose dives like crazy when you go to stop and it feels like the stopping power is very reduced with whatever defaults braking you have without that ABS module fully working. So anyways, I went ahead and found one of these. They're strikingly really hard to find. Make sure when you guys order it, that you get the same part number so there's the part number right there so make sure you get the same one so this one specifically is for my 2016 but get the same one and what we're going to be doing is rather than having to re-bleed the brakes and all that seems like this is a common issue across a lot of fca vehicles but they're just changing the module so it's an issue with this actual module not sure who the manufacturer is of this you can see right here it looks like ATC, I want to say this little symbol there, but these seem to be failing. So what we're going to do is rather than change the whole module with the solenoids, we're just going to unscrew it from our actual braking solenoid section. We're just going to unscrew the electronic portion. So it's four torque screws there. Then this will come off. We can put this back on and then we'll reinitialize it. We should be good to go. So if you're wondering where it is, it is over here on your driver's side right there so those two screws is going to get us access to it so in order to do this most simply i'm going to pop this wheel off pull the fender liner and we'll get in there all right so wheel is off you don't necessarily have to take the wheel off to get to this you guys but unless you want to hang like a monkey upside down deep in the engine bay because it is way down there um just gives you a little bit better access so anyways you don't have to take out the fender liner either but you can just go like this so there is the plug we have to take that off if you're wondering how to take that off there's two clips right here let me show you so to open this style latch you're gonna squeeze right here and you're gonna lift up like that once it opens up in the 90 degree position then this can wiggle off like so so my plug is disconnected. Now the only thing holding that electronic portion is those four T20 Torx. So I'm gonna do that, swap that out. Okay, so the four screws are out. I'm just gonna give it a little wiggle. It's gonna slide off exactly like that. Make sure that you don't get any dirt inside here. And oddly enough, I wouldn't be surprised that this failed because I do not see a gasket. <laughs> that is ridiculous. There's no gasket on this thing, you guys. It is just plastic. Yeah, that's ridiculous. No gasket. You can actually see a little bit of dirt inside there. No wonder these things fail. All right, so there we go. Just a quick smear of RTV around the perimeter. Very, very light, nothing crazy. I did decide to block the ports in the bottom. I just figured less moisture inside this unit, the better. And I uh, made sure I did a good job of it not being able to get in anywhere else. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this. Okay, so old one is out, new one is in. I'm pretty sure you guys can figure that out. It's four T20 Torx screws, so I'm sure if you guys are working on stuff like this, you can figure that out, but. So there we go, I got the unit plugged in. I'm gonna close the latch until it clicks. So there you go, she's fully latched in place. Now I can put my battery back on, and let's see, probably have to reinitialize the ABS module, but I'll show you guys the process and uh, I'll show you guys just the instant result. Okay, let's go ahead and see what we got. Just for fun, since uh, there might be some DIY guys trying to do this, let's see what happens if I just cycle this thing up. See if it's pissed off or if we do have to reinitialize it. 
so far. I don't see the brake light. Let's see. Service trailer brake system. Service electronic. We lost that one brake light. Remember there's that one right there? So we are down one. Service trailer brake system. So one less message. Service anti-lock brake system and service trailer brake system. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna use Alpha OBD. I will link everything you need for Alpha OBD down below, including the OBD2 connector and the program. And uh, let's see what she does. All right, so here we go. We've got Alpha OBD up on the screen and we're gonna select in our case Ram 1500 ABS. So we're gonna go 2013 ABS, connect, we'll let it connect. All right, so we're connected to the ABS module and you're gonna see it kind of do a bunch of flickering and beeping on the dash as you're connected to it. It's just normal. So we're gonna click down here. It's like a check engine light. Sorry for the glare, but you'll have to just bear with us. Read all faults. A lot of faults. So we're gonna clear these. Read all faults again. So the one we're getting now is C2202, original VIN mismatch. So since this is out of a different vehicle, we're gonna have to correct that. So let's go fix that. So what we're gonna do is go over here, with the little vehicle here, and we're gonna have to reinitialize this. We're gonna go to ABS initialization, and you can see all this run static ECU initialization. It's right here, we're gonna run this. So just follow the steps here, you guys. Sorry about the glare, but it gives you all the different ones that you wanna run. So acceleration sensor calibration, so we'll go over here. We're gonna run that guy. Completed. Next one up says to clear the DTCs. So we're gonna clear. Yes, and cycle the ignition. So you'll notice now our ABS light went out. Our brake light went out. We can go over here and we'll read our faults. No faults found. So now we're back in business, boys. We start it. Hey, look at that. No stored messages. So now we are back. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Last one it does say to do is run clearing rolls information. So let's clear that because we have no idea what was in the old vehicle. Clearing rolls information. We're gonna run that one too. All right, so she's all done. The other thing too is not a bad idea to go in. You're gonna keep on the ABS as well. And if you have a trailer brake controller, which we do, go here, connect. And I did have a code in here. So connected to integrated trailer brake module. So I did have a code in here. You can read the faults to see if you have a code but mine said that there was no communication with the ABS module, so all I did was clear it, and now I've got nothing, so we are back. All right, guys, well, there you have it. That is how to fix that ABS module problem with your vehicle, so if you guys found this helpful or informative, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. We've got a lot of helpful content on this channel. We'll see you guys on the next one.